Welcome back to Monroe Live. Today we have something really interesting in store for you. We have Ben Lindemood who's going to run through the Mach-E ADAS system. So ADAS is Advanced Driver Assistance System. So Ben will walk through the radar, ultrasonic sensors, and the vision systems that are used to accomplish their blue cruise. All right, thanks Corey. So what we are looking at here are the parts from the ADAS system from the Mach-E. And when we bought this, there was an option, a $2,600 option, to include what they are calling the Copilot 360 uh, systems. This is not a hands-free driving, which is what they offer in the Blue Cruise package. Uh, but we'll go through what the 360 is and what they're going to do so that this will be Blue Cruise uh, capable here when they push out the updates. So the Copilot 360, uh, it's something that they've added to this, is edge of road detection. So they are using their camera here that is mounted up by the rear view mirror. And this is sensing when you're going down a country road or a construction zone, unfinished road, the, where this edge of the road is. So if there's dirt or grass instead of a white line on the right hand side, that part of the system will help keep you on the road. They are also doing uh, something called blind spot assist now. This is a little bit different. There's been vehicles out for a long time that have had blind spot detection. Uh, as you're driving down the road, you might see in your side view mirrors, a light would turn on when there's somebody in your blind spot. What Ford is doing now is preventing you from merging into that lane if somebody's there. So if you're not, you know, you're going down the road, not paying attention, uh, somebody's in your blind spot, the light goes on, you go to merge lanes the vehicle will automatically bring you back into your lane and center you in your lane to prevent running into whoever was in your blind spot. And the third thing that they've brought is intersect, intersection assist with this. So what that is, if you pull up to an intersection, you're gonna make a left-hand turn, the light turns yellow and you start to go and proceed through the intersection and the system picks up somebody going through the other way, speeds up to try and make it through before it turns red, it'll prevent you from going through the intersection and getting in an accident. And once that uh, potential threat is out of the way, you'll regain control of the vehicle and go through the intersection. So they're doing that right now with five radars and a camera system. So they have four radars that look like this. These are their blind spots. They are in the rear quarter panels, and they are also uh, in the front fender facing outward. So with these radar, they're able to sense up to, what was it, 220 meters that we were looking at, mm -hmm. the radar can sense for distance, so it goes pretty far out. Um, these are installed really easily into the vehicle. You have an injection molded bracket and there, this is a snap fit. That's a pretty loose snap now. We've been taking this, uh, taking this apart and putting it back together a few times. So it's worn a little more than what it would in the vehicle. But from an installation and assembly process, it's really easy, no fasteners, put it in place and slide it down and in. And then they have the, the center forward facing radar. Uh, it does have a little bit more range, has a little bit more fidelity to the data to help with driving. So these are, this is the equipment along with the, the camera that you need to enable Blue Cruise. And what Blue Cruise is, is Ford's uh, driving assistance when you're on a divided highway. You can take your hands off the steering wheel completely, take your feet off the pedals, and the, road, or the car will just drive you down the road, merging in and out of traffic and, and going as it needs to. Um, and they are doing this to make sure you you still pay attention. There's an infrared camera that is mounted on the, on the steering wheel column that makes sure that you're still looking at the road and you're not taking a nap or reading the paper or something as you go. So this is not out yet. Um, if our Mach-E was still drivable, there would be an update that we would be able to get to enable the Blue Cruise feature. But for now, um, it, is, it is just the Copilot 360 that Mach-E's are able to get. Um, and they are doing this. There are a few modules that we have here today. Um, just a couple of small auxiliary modules. The large module is currently being analyzed, so we don't have that for the, to show you in the video. We'll pop up a picture here just to show you what it is. And we're gonna compare that to what, uh, what Tesla is doing with theirs, just to give you an idea of the size between the two. And with all of this, and when it's put in place, the Mach-E has been able to get level two autonomy 
So SAE has published a, a chart. Uh, we'll, we can take a look at it here, put up a, put up a better picture of it. But what S, SAE level two is, is it's a driver assist that the driver still needs to pay attention to the road. You can't be doing anything else while it's happening. Right now, everywhere in the, U, uh, the US hasn't authorized anything above level two autonomous. So everything that's on the road today is level two. The driver needs to be paying attention. So it, what, uh, where it's going is towards level three, where you can start to, in certain situations, not pay attention to, to the road. Uh, we're in Japan, uh, Honda has gotten there currently. They have some level three autonomous vehicles in Japan. Mercedes is looking to release a few as well. They're, they're currently in testing. Um, so that's, that's where the industry is going, is towards the level three, level four, Level four would be a self-driving taxi. And then level five is a vehicle that you can get rid of the steering wheel and go anywhere with. So that's where, uh, what the industry is, where it's going, and this is how, how Ford attacked this problem. Yeah, and a big difference between how Ford is approaching this, these, their components and Tesla is approaching theirs is Tesla is giving away their ADAS board. This is a ADAS hardware three you get this hardware with every Tesla that's sold in 2020 and beyond. And they started offering hardware 2.5 with the Model 3s that launched in early 2018. And their system is very similar in that they're using vision, radar, and ultrasonic sensors. But in May of 2021, Model 3s and Model Ys began shipping without this module right here. So the commensurate part on the Mach-E is the forward-facing radar. And here we have the chipsets that are part of the forward-facing radar. We will soon have the Mach-E broken down to this level. Now Tesla says that their vision system for their autopilot is capable enough that they've decided to eliminate this forward-facing radar on all of their vehicles moving forward. But one thing that we noticed was that there is a tremendous amount of chips and pieces on these boards, 373 to be exact. We, we just had them counted up today. But Tesla selling 800,000 vehicles a year, now in the absence of a forward-facing radar, this is the only radar unit on their vehicle. Tesla uses vision if you see right here, here's one of their cameras for their cross car and side views. Um, so when you look at the Mach-E system, you'll see there's five total radar sensors, uh, four that are for the side and rearward facing are common, and the frontward facing one is a little bit more um, high end. Um, so the reason I point this out is all of these pieces are being eliminated from the Tesla vehicle moving forward. They're going to rely on vision only, but all vehicles ordered from Tesla receive the Hardware 3. These boards are very expensive. Our team has done a full cost analysis of, of the ADAS boards, and once we get done with our full analysis of the Mach-E, we'll be able to compare and contrast all of the ADAS costs of their systems and all of the ADAS costs for the Tesla. And all right, um, and as we look at this, there's two different approaches that Ford and Tesla is doing. Tesla's looking at using cameras for theirs, where Ford's relying mostly on radar. Um, there are a few drawbacks and a few advantages to each. The cameras uh, do offer better range, so you can see further away. They also allow you to identify what an object is. So if there's a tree that fell in the road, you could see that it's a, a tree, or if there's a car in the road in front of you, a, a pedestrian. With the radar, you're just able to know that there's something in the road in front of you. You wouldn't know what it is. So the camera lets you identify that object and then react differently depending on what it is. And with all of the cameras, you also can read, uh, read road signs. So you could understand if there's a change in speed limit due to construction. So the cameras can pick up that information where radars won't be able to do that. Um, the, the problem with the cameras is it went, during inclement weather, during uh, twilight or dusk, it doesn't pick, up, doesn't pick up what's in the road better. If there's 
sleet, if there's snow, if there's some fog covering up your windows, uh, covering up the cameras, it won't be able to see what's out there. So there'll be a few more issues as you go down the road with the, with the self-driving or with, a t with uh, level two driver assist. So that where the radars, it doesn't care what's in front of it. It doesn't care if it's foggy or dark. Uh, it'll, it'll still be able to, to reach out and see what's there. All right. Ben, thanks for running through all these components. Um, I hope the viewers have a little bit better of understanding of the pieces and parts that are on the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Uh, the parts we showed from the Tesla Model Y do not include all the pieces and components for their system, just the circuit boards and the forward-facing a radar sensor that's being eliminated. Um, thanks for tuning in and we really appreciate you watching Monroe Live. Mm -hmm.